Welcome back to some more maintenance with Silk Rider. As you can see, the KTM 450 EXCF is on its side, and that's because we're gonna do a uh, clutch inspection. And that just doesn't mean we're gonna just take it out for fun, uh, but as part of the service schedule, 10 or 30 hours, depending on uh, how you ride, um, we can take it out and we can check the thickness of the plates. Uh, but there's also a couple wear items in there that are uh, worth checking out that wear out. Uh, in my case, um, sooner than the clutch discs wear out. So this bike's got 100 hours on it. If you haven't seen my other videos, uh, particularly valve clearances, um, I talk about the service manual and what we're doing here is going to be straight from the service manual. Um, if you don't know where to get it, it's print.ktm.com. And you can just put your VIN number in there. You can uh, search by your model. And I mean, it's a great uh, piece of literature because um, if you're not a mechanic, first of all, it's, you know, basically a dummy's guide. I mean, it goes step by step from, you know, how to put the bike, what the torque values are, of course. It, it just does everything. I mean, it has every single detail that you'd ever need to know. Uh, so in that respect, it's educational in the fact, in the respect that uh, you you learn standards of mechanics and engineering. Okay. Uh, on the other side of things, if you you are a mechanic, you know what you're doing. Um, there are lots of things, for example, um, measurements and precision measurements that you wouldn't know just by having the owner's manual or just by looking at the bike. There's no uh, there's nowhere printed what the clutch thickness of the clutch pack should be. Okay, there's nowhere, uh, uh, you don't know what the valve clearances should be. Um, torque values are another thing, but things like this, a lot of details, especially with the engine, particularly, um, that you need to pay attention to a lot of these details that are essentially tolerances. Um, and uh, the service manual is what it's for. Now, the reason the bike's on its side is I have oil inside, and if you have oil inside, um, taking off this clutch cover is going to obviously vacate a lot of your oil. Um, a good time to do this actually is when you're doing uh, oil change service, and uh, you uh, empty the oil, empty the engine of all the oil, and then uh, replace the drain plugs and the oil screens. And then leave the bike without oil, and that and that way you can have the bike upright, um, no problem, and you can take this off. But with the bike on its side, you can do it with oil on the bike. So we're gonna start by taking this off and uh, showing you what's inside here. All right. Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna undo this spring hook, and lo and behold, special tool time. This is a spring hook. Um, it's kind of not gonna happen with just a pair of needleless pliers. It will, it'll take you a little more time. You'll scratch up the uh, engine cover possibly, but with this, it's pretty simple. All you gotta do is sort of grab onto it and then use the um, needle nose pliers just to pull it out because it's curved. And that's all you gotta do. Uh, remove that just so you don't lose it. And then we're going to take off my protection cover and the clutch cover itself. All right, and as always working on the engine, make sure this is clean because any dirt getting into there is basically you're getting into the drivetrain transmission of the engine. It's going to gum it up, so just clean it off before you take off the cover. All right, and there are no washers under any of these screws. We're gonna pull this up, and there's gonna be a gasket. So this is sticking. This is a rubber gasket, so it shouldn't break. If it breaks, it's time to replace it. So there's your cover, and your gasket's right over here. It fits into this groove uh, inside of the uh, engine cover. So set that aside. 
and here we are. Uh, now, you'll notice that um, what, what we have here is the Belleville spring, which is the spring that um, actuates the clutch action. So this is going in and out when you pull the clutch in and out, the clutch lever. You see there's a, a marks there for one behind the screw, two and three. Uh, that's an important setting we're going to get to after we get to reassembly. All right, so let's start by removing these screws of the uh, spacer here uh, for the Belleville spring. All right, now since the spring retainer is under pressure, we're going to loosen these screws in a crisscross pattern. Now, it's also very, very, very important. You don't drop anything into the engine, like I almost just did. Um, there's gears and stuff in here. This is, uh, you, you, again, your, your drivetrain starts here, your transmission. Don't drop anything in there. Um, it's slightly more difficult to do that when the bike is on its side. Uh, so, yeah, make sure you have a pen magnet to fish anything out in case you do drop it out. But here we go, the spring retainer is removed and you can see how there are sort of uh, ridges with different uh, sizes, okay? Uh, different heights, I would say. So we're gonna get back to that in assembly. Bell little spring cone-shaped, so putting it back on with the cone pointing upwards. Now we have also a pre-tension ring, which is basically a washer for the Belleville spring, which has to come out. Uh, use either a spring hook or, uh, or a small screwdriver. There you go. Now we have the clutch pressure cap. Yeah. Those were the bushes. Looks like two of them. All right, I didn't lose any into the engine. One fell out. So anyway, yeah, I, I'm doing this on the side the first time. Last time I did it, the bike was standing up, but these are sleeves, basically. Pull those out of the clutch pack. Don't drop them in. And now we can remove the entire clutch pack. So start by pulling out as many as you can with your fingertips. You have to get them all out at the same time. That's almost all of them. I'm gonna check if there's a plate at the bottom there. Keep them in order also. Yeah, there's one more. Okay. So, clutch pack. And you can see the friction rings with the friction material, and then you have plates, okay? So, uh, both of these wear out. The friction material is what wears more, but when you replace the clutch pack, you're gonna replace this whole thing. All right, now before we get into measuring the clutch pack and uh, changing clutch discs, uh, changing the clutch pack, we still have to get to the uh, rest of the clutch. We have to take the clutch basket out, okay? Um, one thing that you wanna check um, for wear is edges on the clutch basket, okay? Ridges, basically, when you rub your finger up on these uh, basket uh, ring, uh, basket uh, spikes, 
they sh there shouldn't be any ridges and if there are uh, that means your clutch basket's worn out it's time to replace it and this is basically where the clutch discs sit and they grab onto this so if you imagine all that all that turning force all that sheer force digs into these uh, clutch basket ring uh, clutch basket spikes here and they get worn out but in order to take the clutch basket out we're gonna have to take this uh, nut out and as you can see it spins now first thing we have to do is take off the lock washer which is bent onto the onto the nut so take a chisel bend it back That's one bent back. All right, now it's extra special tool time. And uh, essentially we need something to hold this clutch basket while we loosen this nut. Uh, the only way you can do that is with this uh, clutch basket holding tool, a clutch basket wrench. Okay, this is a Motion Pro wrench and it works either by, uh, it works on multiple models, but you can obviously use these uh, these teeth sort of things here and sort of grab onto this but this is cool because it has these round uh, these round pins that you can use it to basically put uh, them where the sleeves used to go and that way you won't um, shear off any edges of the clutch basket uh, because it's it, it's a perfect uh, it's a perfect fit so just get that flat in there lock it into place don't squeeze it too hard because this is aluminum remember and uh you know you just don't want to break you don't want to break it because it's it could be brittle okay so that's that's being held in place now all right this is going to be a 27 millimeter and actually if this is uh difficult to take off don't be don't be shy to use some heat uh, to loosen up the nut with heat uh, that always helps especially on a cold engine but this came off and the important thing here guys is holding the clutch basket doing anything other than the tool that we have here is really going to damage the edges um, you don't want to damage the edges because your sleeves are in there and your clutch baskets in there. So before you do this, get one of these tools. They're not that expensive. And if you do it, if you do get the tool, um, you're never gonna have to go to the mechanic. Again, you do your clutch. So we're gonna take out the nut and the lock washer. This you can replace um, depending on how damaged it is. Just buy a couple uh, extras uh, extra spares when you when you order these um, this I used twice so I'm going to replace this one unlock your tool now we're going to take off the clutch hub and there's a washer that's going to stick to the back of it there it is falling into the engine yep yeah, that fell into the engine All right, and finally you have the clutch basket, which we talked about earlier. And this is the guy that has the, um, you can see there's there's some uh, imprints there 
of the clutch basket rubbing against it. But as long as you don't feel anything, this is, this is fine. This is one of the parts along with the clutch hub that you can replace uh, with Hinson parts and basically go for more rigid, stiffer and lighter um, clutch uh, parts. So eventually, I think, you know, after this wears out, I'll replace this with uh, Hinson uh, kit uh, and uh, the clutch should be lighter. I honestly don't know how it's going to feel, but we'll see. And the last two parts in here are the needle bearing and collar bushing. Uh, where is that? It's right here. Okay. Now, uh, this is essentially a bearing, needle bearings and a, uh, and a race. So you can just check that to see if there's any uh, play or if there's any roughness in the bearings. If there's not, just put it right back in there. So that part still good we're gonna we're gonna reuse that all right let's get to our our rubber dampers so when we took off the um, clutch hub uh, this actually comes in two pieces and if you can see there's basically these rubber things which are disintegrating for me okay these rubber dampers um, and basically um, What's ha what happens over time is, well, you need these rubber dampers to basically um, damp the metal to metal contact that you have uh, when you're uh, when you're when you're riding. And essentially, over time, these guys will wear out, and you'll get play in them. And that's the important thing to watch out for. So I'm gonna try to put this back in and see if we can demonstrate this. So if you can see the clutch hub now with the dampers inside, if you put them back onto the spleen, look how much play there is there. Okay, so that little play that we have here, that amplifies down the drivetrain. So essentially, when you're when you're throw, when you're giving it uh, beans and and uh, accelerating away, uh, essentially you're you're getting that little bit of extra play, and replacing those uh, dampers is going to give you that extra uh, preciseness and precision. Um, basically, when when you whenever you're using a throttle, because this is always this is always playing. Now, um, I would recommend you know getting a couple sets of these dampers so you can always have spares to go because you know this is rubber this is not meant to last forever um so yeah let's put the new ones in and see how how it feels all right we're gonna go ahead and replace the clutch basket since uh this is fine make sure your needle bearings and uh sleeve is in there and turn this until you get the gears meshed correctly So that's in. And then let's take our inner clutch hub and we have our new dampers, rubber dampers. And all you gotta do is, uh, is just put those on to each of these little spleens, these uh, arms. And these hold much better, obviously, than the old ones. Yeah, these aren't falling off at all. The other ones, they just wouldn't even stay on and they were mostly all broken. All right, let's get our outer clutch hub. And slide this on, right on. Go easy on it. Yeah, and that's a really tight fit. So this is much better. 
I'm really happy with that. Now, make sure you have your washer that came off. Mount that first. There's uh, two teeth on it. Now let's mount our clutch hub. And yeah, essentially now there's zero play. Uh, this is tight as can be. So I'm expecting better responsiveness uh, on accelerating and any throttle action. All right, we're gonna get our new lock washer. Uh, you can see the tab. It's pretty easy to fit in there. And our nut. All right, and before I get the nut back on, I'm just gonna tap this hub into place because those rubber dampers really are pretty tight and I don't think I'm getting enough thread through here from, this, from the spleens. Now that looks like it's all the way in. Yep. All right, now we can mount our lock washer, which only goes in one direction. There's a little tab that goes in and our nut. No Loctite or anything, just uh, we have to torque it to 80 newton meters obviously while holding uh, the hub with our special tool again gotta love the special tools all right all right here we go There we go, 80. Okay, now we're gonna tap these lock ta locking tabs and the lock washer in place. And we're gonna turn our attention back to the, um, back to the clutch pack. Actually, it's a good idea to leave that tool in place to hold this. Okay. Okay, that's one. All right, and that's that. Okay, so back to the clutch pack. Now, how do we know uh, if we should be changing this unless you have a slipping clutch and you kind of need to change it anyway because you feel it, but during your inspection, um, again, uh, something that the manual definitely comes handy, the repair manual. Um, Take your micrometer, your calipers, and that should be that should be a minimum of twenty six point four millimeters. 
Okay, you can see we have plenty of uh, room here still. We check in a couple places. Okay, that's 26.9. So getting close. That's 27, 26.9. All right, well, that's good enough. Uh, I'll probably have to replace this clutch pretty soon, but it's it's going back in the way it is. Um, now, let's talk about the order of these plates. Uh, again, something you only find in the manual. So, which side goes in first, etc. cetera? How, how do we know? So, again, um, the intermediate clutch disc uh, has an S marking on it. That one goes in first. But also the way you know is that the intermediate clutch, clutch plates, which are the ones on the outsides, these are one millimeter thick. Okay. So that's how you know this one goes on the inside. Actually, we want to have our sleeves in first. Let's do that. Without dropping them in an engine this time, what do you think? So as you can see, these are essentially uh, holding the clutch disc straight and um, and, and aligned across the whole pack. So let's put the rest of these in and I'm gonna actually do it one by one. Now, before you replace the uh, clutch pack, these uh, friction discs, actually the, the whole thing has to be thoroughly oiled. Um, so either let that soak in a tub of oil or really get the oil in there because if you have the clutch pack in there dry, you're gonna have way too much excess friction if you go ahead and start the bike up and just go. Um, and you're just gonna burn out the clutch much faster than needed. Um, because it's hard to get oil circulated in here fast enough before this thing starts turning. Uh, so if, if it goes in dry, while the oil is still circulating, this thing, this thing is still going to be dry, and you're going to have a lot of excess wear. If the oil even gets in, I mean, it probably should, but um, this has to go in oiled, pre-oiled. Um, that's the best way. One more check of these intermediate clutch discs in case you get lost and you confuse the uh, the ending clutch discs with the intermediate ones is the intermediate ones have a thickness of 1.4, whereas the two on the end are a thickness of one, okay? So again, the S marking clutch disc is the first one in. The one without the S is the last one on and the, all the other ones are a thickness of 1.4. So it's just as long as you get those in with the friction material uh, in between, then you're fine. Now, make sure the friction discs are going in the correct orientation in the clutch basket. So, um, so that means that you need the tabs to be uh, not where the clutch basket has this uh, round uh, semicircle. Make sure the tabs are all lined up be in, in between these clutch basket spikes. All right, clutch basket, clutch pack replaced. All right, now that we're done 
looking over the clutch so we can finish putting it together. One part that actually got stuck was the throw out bearing into the, uh, the, the cover here. And essentially, this is just uh, the part that actually comes out as well. Uh, all it is is a rod. This is the part that uh, uh, connects the essentially the clutch lever action to the um, to the pressure plate going in and out. So mount the throw out bearing first. The throw out bearing um, can just be checked by a uh, quick spin. So this is just any normal bearing. If you see any roughness or, or play, you can replace that as well. Next, we're putting the, the pressure plate. Now we're doing the pretension ring, which is the washer for the Belleville spring. Top tip here again, there is an orientation uh, for this washer. And the secret ingredient here is a marking that says top. Now, I do believe There is a s almost barely visible marking here. And what that actually says is top. It might have worn out, but uh, just to be on the safe side, um, remember which orientation it was in because this does have a top side. Try and find that where it says top. You can barely see it there, but let's, let's finish off with the Belleville spring. And now we're going to do the spring retainer. Now, remember, um, we have three positions here. One, two, and three. What I'm going to show you is I'll put it in position three so you can see um, which one you choose depending on, uh, depending on the uh, method we're going to show you. So first, the thing you have to do is align one of the screws with the position you're going to check. So we're going to check three first. And basically what this um, spring retainer is doing is it's pre-tensioning the Belleville spring. And what that means is if it's too loose, um, you're not going to, you're, you're, you're starting off loose. And when you in, uh, actuate the clutch, uh, when, when you pull in the clutch lever, you're not going to get a uh, full um, a clutch release, okay? If the spring retainer is too tight, then you're actually, you actually might have a, uh, a uh, you actually might be in neutral the whole time. I mean, you're gonna, your clutch is going to be uh, disengaged all the time because with the, um, with the, Belleville spring essentially pre-compressed too much, uh, you're, you're already sort of, I guess, half clutching um, without using the clutch lever. So it's important to get the pre-tension correct. Now, unfortunately, we have to um, fully tighten this down to show you what I'm talking about. So let me just torque this real quick and then we'll show you how to check the pre-tension. Okay, we only need six Newton meters and crisscross pattern once again. Now, what we're going to do next is we need to actually have the pretension set so that this cone, remember this is a cone shaped Belleville spring. This is perfectly flat across its surface. Okay, that's the sort of benchmark we need to get. We're, uh, in order to see that, we need 
either uh, a precision uh, metal bar or um, a steel ruler, but my uh, calipers do just fine. And I'm gonna take off my light. And if you put your, put your straight edge across that spring and shine some light, okay, we can clearly see there's light getting through. This is not flat. I can feel it rocking back and forth. Okay, we can see the light. So the third position is too loose. So I know this should be in one. Yeah, I'm gonna put it into one. So just leave that final screw in there, the one that's uh, going through the markings on the retainer, uh, the, re the spring retainer, and slide that over to the setting you, to the next setting. You should try trying each setting, basically, because as your clutch thickness changes, as it gets thinner, you probably need to go lower on the pretension on the Belleville uh, spring retainer. So this is gonna be on one, but uh, I think, but I think it's best to try each one um, to see what your optimal setting will be. And that would, the optimal setting would be to have no light coming through the, uh, the straight edge that you put across the Belleville spring. Uh, showing you that the spring is in fact flat across its top. All right, let's so let's do one last check. I think this this is the the magic number. So we're gonna put my straight edge and this feels like it's pretty flush definitely better than before but if this was too tight you'd actually get light coming through the middle of the uh, spring where I'm holding the straight edge and this looks to be this I mean this is the minimum setting anyway so I'm not going to get anything else because as we know my clutch is probably due for a replacement soon, but yeah, this is pretty good. All right, so this is pretty much all put together. Now we're just gonna put the gasket on and the clutch cover, and that's it. Okay, that should be flush into the engine case and our clutch cover. Now let's see, the spring hook should be there. So this is our spot. I hope you enjoyed another one of these Silk Rider maintenance videos. And as you can see, it's really an easy job. This isn't something that a mechanic should be doing. Uh, you know, I mean, that would go for at least 100 in, in labor, uh, maybe 50 or 60. But um, if you don't know how to do that, it's going to be hard for you to, uh, you know, go traveling or racing internationally. It's something you, sh you should know how to do. It's an easy job. The only thing that makes it difficult is uh, the tool. And this is really the only specialty item that you need. Uh, 60 for this. And you can do this, you know, your whole life with the same tool. So this pays for itself after the first job. Okay, this is this costs probably the labor for the, the job at a mechanic. So the tools are the most important part to make this is painless as possible. So I hope you enjoyed this once again and stay tuned for the next in our series 
all about chains, chain guides, cleaning chains, oiling chains, removing chains, breaking chains, riveting chains. It's going to be a chain bonanza. So stay tuned, happy riding, and stay greasy.